Prolotherapy, as some of you may know, actually that and platelet-rich plasma is currently not covered by insurance. Reasons that the insurance company gives are that, oh, well, there's insufficient scientific ev evidence to show that it works. Well, number one, that's not true. The amount of research has just exploded since about 2003. So there are now uh, over 100 research studies that um, show, and most, not all of them show positive effect, of course, but most of them do. Well, how many insurance companies cover steroid injections? All of them, all right? They don't even bat an eyelash. You can stick steroid anywhere you want and insurance is gonna pay for it. So it's clearly not an evidence-based situation that's going on here. There are other things that are biasing uh, the decisions that are being made. So, okay, let's talk about prolotherapy. What the heck is that? Okay, so um, prolotherapy is short for, for proliferative therapy, all right? And by definition, it's a method of injection treatment designed to stimulate healing. Various irritant solutions are injected into the ligaments, tendons, and joints to encourage repair of damaged tissue. All right? That's the official definition of prolotherapy. Uh, it goes by several different names. Regenerative injection therapy, which you've heard me mention before. You may run across this term, sclerotherapy. Now, interesting historical point about that. Sclero means scar or scar forming. Back in the 1940s, there were some studies done on rats and, and where they looked at the tissue under a microscope and interpreted as scar tissue being formed by these regenerative uh, injections. That has since been shown to not be the case. It's been shown through multiple studies and it kind of irks me that people will still say, oh, prolotherapy, that's where you get scar tissue, right? And it like tightens down the joint. Not true, not true. It doesn't cause scarring, it causes the repair of actual organized tissue. I'll, so, I'll show you a couple research studies that show that. And so sclerotherapy really is an obsolete term. Uh, now, some experts will consider platelet-rich plasma and stem cell therapy to be a form of prolotherapy because by definition it pretty much matches the same definition. Um, I talk about them differently because prolotherapy sort of historically people have a certain understanding of what that is. You're injecting things like dextrose and you know simple solutions to cause regenerative uh, healing. Whereas platelet-rich plasma, you got your fancy centrifuge, you're you know drawing up your own blood and it's all this high-tech business. And then stem cells of course is like you know the, the sort of maximum technology or fanciest technology that we have right now. We're actually getting your own stem cells, putting them in there and getting those stem cells to differentiate into car cells and tendon cells and ligament cells to, uh, you know, to help uh, regenerate the tissue. Biological therapy or biologic therapy or biologics is the real hot term that people are using now. All right, so a little bit of history. I'm going to breeze through this real quick, but just to give you an idea of how long prolotherapy has been around. This is not a new therapy. So when people say, oh, new treatments for tendon ligaments, this stuff's been around since 1930. Actually, 1937 is the first documented use of an actual, at that time they still called it sclerotherapy, but an actual use of these regenerative therapies to fix the sacroiliac ligaments. 1937, so it's been around for 75 years. Uh, prolotherapy was coined in 1950 by this guy right here, George Hackett. You can see that, oh, actually you're gonna see this diagram again, I think, um, in terms of that, it's, it's a diagram of the sacroiliac region. All right, then there's this guy, Gus Hemwall. This guy is, uh, I have to thank this guy directly for uh, leading to me learning prolotherapy. He passed away in the 1990s, but it's through his foundation that I was trained in prolotherapy. So Hackett and Hamwell met in 55, and then they uh, you know, published their first textbook. All right, so then in 59, now this is interesting, the AMA actually had a prolotherapy association. So the AMA actually kind of, you know, recognized prolotherapy. And what ended up happening actually is that in the late 50s, there were five cases of bad outcomes that happened, right? And they used uh, solutions that we don't use anymore. They were pretty caustic, like zinc sulfate and psyllium seed oil. So what happened was they actually caused nerve damage and spinal cord damage in these individuals. A couple of them were actually paralyzed. So after that happened, prolotherapy falls out of favor. And it wasn't until 84 that it kind of started getting revived through the American uh, Association of Orthopedic Medicine. That's another national organization that I do a lot of teaching with. Here's a little diagram of us in, in Mexico um, doing some of our mission work down there. All right, so what about PRP? PRP, again, not really that new. It's been around since 1985. It was first used in um, periodontics to repair the, um, the, you know, when they did uh, tooth extractions to repair the bone. Uh, it wasn't until the 2000s that it, you got a lot more, you know, it became a lot more popular, especially after this guy right here, Heinz Ward of the Steelers, which they're kind of my team.
Uh, both Heinz Ward and Troy Palomalo had PRP done before, uh, just weeks before they won the Super Bowl back in, I think, 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, so basically a lot of increasing media attention, you know, Tiger Woods and Kobe Bryant and a couple of the Redskins, I can't frankly or even remember who, are all getting this stuff. Because, you know, if it's done correctly, you make a good diagnosis, this stuff works. So some more di stuff in terms of prolotherapy in the news. Here's uh, um, Bodie Miller, uh, U.S. Uh, Olympic ski uh, guy who had uh, prolotherapy for his knees. Uh, stuff in the, the New York Times and all that stuff.